Chemcon is the place for authorities and compliance-driven companies to share knowledge and experiences about chemical control regulations around the globe. An essential bootcamp for global product stewardship directors and their team members that allow them to connect regulations and resources in various regions. It's easy to get one's wires crossed in the global regulation jumble. So I'm happy to hear from Guy Verbeest from Honeywell and Karsten Müller from BASF how they organize and handle global regulatory challenges. Guy, how does Honeywell keep track of new and updated regulations? Um, we do have subscriptions with uh, regulatory providers uh, on a daily basis, weekly or monthly, so several providers. Um, next to that, we uh, obviously get a lot of information from uh, industry associations uh, around the globe, so ACC, CEFIC, uh, uh, IECM. Um, and otherwise it's networking, so it's uh, a, a very important thing in product stewardship, not what you know, but who you know, so uh, connecting to colleagues is a very big thing. And then of course there are the global conferences as this one is uh, a good heads up for what's coming. And what is your internal process when you have spotted a new or updated regulation? So generally we first check the, the the regulatory deadlines and set up an inventory. The inventory is the first step and then we, we will automatically see what kind of products are affected, what businesses are affected, what are the supply chains to that country and that triggers the way how we cover it. It may be more local, it may be more centralized, but it really depends on the country. How do you handle in these regulations all the language challenges? For that we definitely use our local resources. Uh, we are covered uh, globally, so uh, when we do a check and balance we always go back to our um, local uh, companies to have a check because especially in the Asian part of the world uh, there may be some um, sensitivities in certain uh, words or language, so we want to avoid that at all costs. When the business impact uh, and supply chain impact of a regulation is known, how do you communicate about that to your internal and external stakeholders? We have uh, defined contact partners in all the business units and also in the regions and in the countries, and we use this network to spread the news and to communicate. Those colleagues will multiply our, the messages and transfer it to the respective units like supply chain, uh, or other units that, that are affected. There might be very important decisions or regulations for which you need to uh, involve your upper management. When do you start engaging them? At what point in time? Very early, usually. So we uh, inform at least to the, the head of product safety, product stewardship early on in the process. So that allows us also to, to get, uh, get management support uh, for the further implementation steps. Guy, what kind of uh, information do you receive from your suppliers? In many cases we receive from our suppliers um, information that we have already on the radar screen so we uh, know what to expect. We like to get uh, our suppliers, uh, let's say, on the same um, platform as where we are because it's a cooperation in the supply chain, uh, up and down. Okay, Karsten, how do you efficiently and effectively um, uh, provide information to your downstream users? We do the, the customer communication via our business units and I'm in a central function so we are just supplying the, the basic information, facts and figures maybe, but we leave all the communication to the business units. They decide when and what to communicate to which industry, sector, country and so on. What kind of human resources are needed for the current and future regulatory challenges? A whole uh, group of dedicated uh, specialists. Um, it's one of those things, product stewardship is something that grows on you. It's not something that you learn in college. So it's uh, um, highly qualified professionals that are doing that. Most of the regulations that we see, we see now are more in um, emerging countries, I would say and based on uh, existing legislation in the established chemical countries. And, uh uh, Karsten, what kind of IT tools and software are helping you to effectively and efficiently implement new regulations throughout your business? IT tools got more and more important. Um, 
We are using a very big commercial software for our business processes, so the platform is also a global one. Therefore, we uh, rely on this platform and we build all our tools around this platform. This makes us um, a bit uh, less flexible when it comes to the choice of the tools. However, uh, it makes us more efficient and effective when we have set up these tools. How do you protect confidential business information? So if we go external, um, we will always uh, have contracts drawn up by the legal departments with ha which cover NDA, uh, so non-disclosure agreements, with those third parties. And for the IT tools, I mean, a lot of internet breaches uh, and security things? Yeah, it's, it's a major issue for us. Um, we also have third parties working on our premises in our systems. We have contracts set up, that's fine. But if you have implemented global tools, global systems, you have to spend quite some efforts in an appropriate um, security and role system. Who can see or write uh, what in the system? That's quite complicated. And I think it will also be a, a future role of chemical industry to, to interact with uh, the authorities all over the world to, to see whether the data is really protected uh, in every system that is necessary. How do you handle product recalls? Typically, well, uh, we are tracking um, our, our products uh, through the a ERP system that uh, Carsten was alluding to. So uh, we know um, what we put in the market, where we put it in the market. So if a recall happens, um, there is a whole process before the actual uh, action of uh, doing an active recall. Um, but, and the recall itself uh, will be coordinated by the business uh, unit. So, And for several businesses that we um, supply, it's also an obligation to have fixed procedures for, pro for product recalls and also to train them regularly. Thank you for sharing your experiences in how to achieve compliance with global chemical control legislation. It showed that many efforts and resources are needed to disentangle regulations and align the various interests and needs of all stakeholders involved. It is definitely not plug and play. And before you know it, you have a loose wire that needs your attention.